they create the space, they push the line of scrimmage, they make it happen, even though we tend to forget about their names. Uh, two starters are back. Transfer to Indiana was somewhat unexpected. Uh, your thoughts about the offensive line and how that sets up? I think this is everybody's biggest worry. The offensive line is the one that is probably the biggest question mark and had the the most struggles in 2020. And so, you know, with with those two combinations, it usually doesn't bode well. You know, I think Sharon Moore is going to help a lot. You know, uh, Michigan's going from Ed Warner, who did a lot with a little, with some of the guys that he worked with over the past five years. And now Sharon Moore is the new offensive line coach here. Uh, but I, I I do think that there's a couple of those leaders that are that are vets in the locker room that can help out. And there are going to be some young guys that, that step up. And so, you know, Vestardis, I, I don't know if he will end up being the starter. He was a former walk-on that got some playing time because of some injuries uh, and some transfers and things like that. Um, but he, he could possibly be the, uh, the starting center. I could also see, uh, you know, Ryan Hayes being that senior leader on at left tackle. You know, Michigan's going to need that left tackle position because we need these quarterbacks to be super comfortable in what they're doing. And so this offensive line is really that important. So, you know, I see it as Ryan Hayes, Trevor Keegan, Andrew Vistardis, Zach uh, Zinter, and then Andrew Stuber. And so, you know, there that's it's going to be interesting how how that pans out. I think there may be some some changes made. I would I would expect some changes to be made in the first few weeks uh, as we see things pan out, and maybe some young guys getting some getting some love here. I know Carson Barnhart uh, has definitely showed uh, some good things in the spring and here in the summer, and so is Nolan Rumler. And so uh, I think this is you know you can probably tell in the way I'm talking that it's not very uh, you know set in stone. It's a really all over the place here with the offensive line. This is the one spot where I think Michigan doesn't really know which way to go, and they don't know who who and what they have in this position group. I'm going to point out one positive from the Michigan offense, in addition to Hassan Haskins and Ronnie Bell in 2020, and that's that the turnover rate was top 20 in the nation. So they only fumbled a couple times, and only had four picks out of their quarterbacks. Of course, they only played half a season, but still the turnover rate percentage was top 20 in the nation, so they held on to the football. Now they got to come up with more consistency in moving the chains and, of course, explosive plays uh, for this Michigan offense and figure out who that guy's going to be because they certainly don't want to be in October with a quarterback controversy. Yes, absolutely. And I think the, the one thing that you touched on there that I think is probably the most important is explosive plays. Uh, that's something that Michigan, they haven't let it loose. They haven't thrown that deep ball over and over again. They haven't had the breakout run very often. And so I, I think Michigan fans, when they watch Michigan and it's you know short, choppy, move it down the field a little bit or stall out, then they watch Ohio State or some or Indiana and they're airing it out over and over again and it's constant 25 plus yard plays and so that's the thing that's what college football is nowadays you know there's no there's Jim Harbaugh's offense of take 9 minutes uh you know off the clock for one drive chug it along and win 21 to 7 that doesn't happen anymore and so you have to be able to keep up with other offenses that can throw it down the field and put points on the board. And so that's the thing that I'm looking for Josh Gaddis to do is break out that offense a little bit. Let these guys go, you know, throw it deep. You've got guys in Caden McNamara and J.J. McCarthy who have the arms to get it done. You've got the speed at the wide receiver position. You've got the speed at the running back position. Get them in their space and let them go and take some shots where, you know, if you if you are too conservative, you're going to be left behind, left in the dust. Much of success in sports is about calculated risks. So while it's a higher percentage pass, probably 75, 80% to throw it down in the flat to or check it down to a running back for four yards uh, versus a 35% completion percentage once you throw it past 20, 25 yards, there's also a risk in staying on the field for 12 and 13 plays during a drive because one penalty puts you behind the chains. One yep. sack, one deflected pass at the line of scrimmage, it's picked off, the, the the drive's over, as opposed to three plays, 75 yards, boom, we made it happen, we're in the end zone touchdown. 
Yeah, and I think the problem that you know Michigan saw before Josh Gaddis came to came to Michigan, it was more Jim Harbaugh's offense, right? And that's what they were doing those nine minute drives. And what happened was it worked really well as long as that defense held stout and held the other team to to some to not so many points. As soon as they fell behind, there's no catching up. And so that was the big problem that Michigan saw is anytime that they they got down 14-7, 21-7, even if it's the second quarter, you could kind of call that the ball game. And so that's what Michigan's trying to change right now and to be able to do you know have those uh, explosive plays, especially with a new defensive coordinator coming in. You can't bank on that defense being, you know, strong. And you can't – it's not a Don Brown 2016 defense where you're giving up less than a touchdown a game anymore. You know, they it, it's a different defense. It's They're going to play the 3-4. They're going to get some more points scored on them, kind of a bend but don't break type defense. But you got to be able to catch up. That's just college football in 2021. I took a call from somebody last night and uh, wanted to clarify for them when we were talking about defense and they basically said defense is not important anymore. It doesn't matter how you play defense. I said, no, no, no. You need to adjust your thinking. Defense is still important. Just the standard statistically of what a great defense is different than it was 10 years ago. Right. You're no longer going to have Alabama holding it teams to nine an average of nine points per game like they did in 2009 but it's still just as important just if you hold them to 22 25 points a game then you're playing great defense still it's just a different statistical landscape but playing the defense is just as important it is i yeah that's a common misconception too that it's you know you can let up 45 points as long as you score 49 right and so uh you know i see that a lot and, and so I think, you know, I give Alabama a ton of credit and Nick Saban there for realizing that, you know, he's realized, hey, we don't, we don't want to win, you know, we don't, what was the LSU game that year? Nine to three, I think. Nine, six. Yeah. You know, so we don't want to win that game nine, six anymore. We want to win it 49, you know, to 35 or something. And so Saban has brought that on. I'm looking for Harbaugh to do somewhat of the same. And so it'll be interesting to see how Mike McDonald, uh, the the new defensive coordinator for Michigan takes that from the NFL and the Baltimore Ravens to Michigan because the NFL is similar, especially when you're talking that Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens, they score a lot of points. They also give up some decent points too. And so it'll be interesting to see how he comes into the fold and makes, makes some changes or makes some cultural adjustments into how they view their defense instead of trying to be, you know, all right, we're going to beat you with one-on-one defense and never change anything. You know, so we'll see how that goes. Run it down this way. Uh, if you look at the last four national champions, uh, yes, the defensive numbers are going to be compromised. But at the same time, Alabama gave up 14 and 24 in the playoffs last year. The year before, LSU gave up 28 to Oklahoma, and most of that was complete garbage because they were crushing them the entire game. Then they gave up 25 to Trevor Lawrence in the championship game. That's not a ton of points. No. The year before, Clemson gave up three to Notre Dame, and they gave up 16 to Alabama in the championship game. Alabama gave up six the year before to Clemson in the semifinal, then gave up uh, 20 to Georgia in the championship game. Those are not huge scoring totals. Yeah, so, no, I, I play defense. You can play defense. Exactly. I, and I think that's the, that's a focus there is, you know, when it does, when they do need to, you know, hunker down and, and try and, and get some stops, they're going to get some stops. And so I, I think that's the difference there, you know, between the Alabamas and the Clemsons of the world, you know, and a lot of the rest of the, of the college football of college football is, you know, they can get stops against, uh, against army or against, you, you know, uh, Appalachian state for, I'll say that for them, for the Michigan fans out there too. Um, and so I, you know, I think that that's the difference is Alabama and, and Clemson can do it against the best of the best. Right. And when Nick Saban needs to go out there and have his defense play well, his defense plays well, you know? And so that's where Michigan has to, has to go from good to great. I think Michigan, we've talked about it. You know, everyone rags on Harbaugh. He's been good. He's he's a solid college football coach. He's he's won 10 got 10 games in 3 out of his 6 or 7, you know, 6 and a half seasons we'll call it. You know, and so th- they need to make that jump from good to great where instead of, you know, those 3 games that you lose being by 30 points, 
you have to be close in those games. You, you can't go on the road and go down 35 nothing to Wisconsin. You can't, you know, in your in your season finale, lose to Ohio State 62 to 39, you know, and so that's where Michigan has to make that step if they want to, you know, take everything to the next level. Good stuff. Uh, I ruined our offensive breakdown with all those defensive metrics, but uh, Justin playing along with me here uh, to catch him on stadium and main podcast uh, covering Michigan football. Justin, we appreciate you stopping by breaking down the whole Michigan offense for us. Hopefully you can come back and do the defense. Absolutely. We'll be back. Thanks for having me.